Back to King's Kids. Hey, it's Arnie here from Arnie Shack. Uh, great to have the members of God's royal family here again. Uh, you know, because we are sons and daughters of the King of the Universe, we are all King's Kids. Oh, I just love that. Uh, today we are going to be looking into the Bible again at the time when an animal actually spoke to a person. Uh, we will be learning about following God's way. Our verse to remember is found in John 14.23. It says, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. Uh, that is a great verse to learn and apply. Uh, anyway, let's get on with today's program. Uh, g'day there, uh, boys and girls, and welcome along to Balloon Kaboom. Uh, i got my friend here with me, Pastor Darren. Hi there, Pastor Darren. Hi, Arnie. Hi, boys and girls. It's so good to be back again. I'm really, really excited to see what we're going to uh, be making with the balloons today, Pastor Darren. Well, I am too. Mm. But today I have an orange balloon. An orange balloon? I'm mm. going to inflate it. Right. This time going all the way to the end. Oh, that's a leaving long way. Leaving a small tail. Mm -hmm. See if you can guess what it might be. Uh, we're going to guess, boys and girls. Start with the head. Yeah, start with the head. Small bubble. Mm -hmm. Bigger bubble. Bigger bubble. I'm going to now, big clue, I'm going to make the beak. It's got a beak. Uh, that's what you call a snake beak. <laughs> And I'm going to bring it around and make the head. Right. Then the body. Then the body. And leave a tail. I'm going to twist these three together. Right. Mm -hmm. And bring it around into the swing. Oh, it's got a swing, boys and girls. It's on a swing. Mm -hmm. Wow. There's its tail. It's on a swing perch. And there it is. Wow, that's fantastic, uh, Pastor Darren. I reckon it's a squirrel on a on a swing. A squirrel on a swing? Does a squirrel have a beak, boys and girls? No. Tell Arnie what it is. Oh, I can hear what they're saying. 
They're saying it's a parrot. That's right. It's a parrot in a swing. Parrot, yeah. You got a parrot on the farm, Arnie? Uh, not at the moment. But when you have a parrot in your house, guess what happens? Uh, it, it starts to copy what you say. It copies what you say. Mm -hmm. That's right. So if we say good things... It says good things. If we say bad things... Uh, it will just say bad things. So it pays to obey God... Yep. Read his word, mm -hmm. pray every day and say good things. Oh, I think so, Pastor Darren. That is a really good idea because other people may be watching and they will just mimic us. That's right. They watch us and we can be a good example to others. Exactly. In this world, we can either follow God's way mm -hmm. and what he wants us to do or the world's way, mm -hmm. which can take us away from God. That's right. So I choose God's way. God's way. Read your Bible, talk to him, pray to him, and do what he tells us to do in his word. It's the only way to go. Mm, I hope the children choose God's way. That's right. So when you see a parrot, remember, we need to be an example to others and follow God's way. Uh, that's a nice parrot on a swing you've made there, Pastor Darren. I think so. Do you want to take him home? Yeah, I'd love to. There you go. Yeah, I could um, put him up in the ceiling and, and he can um, <laughs> he can whistle. Yeah. I don't know if he'll whistle. <laughs> don't think he will. Well, I'll make sure that I say good things, Pastor Darren. That's right. Say good things to your parrot and 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 he'll he'll listen. Yeah. Anyway, boys and girls, uh, we've got to go now. So from balloon to boom, uh, we'll see you next time. See you, Pastor Darren. Bye, Arnie. Bye, boys and girls. See ya. Yeah, Polly want a cracker. <laughs> yeah, he's not saying anything, Pastor Darren. <laughs> he won't say much. Polly want a cracker. <laughs> mm. uh, John 14, 23. Uh, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. Hi, everyone. My name is Nurse Betty. One of the things I love to do is to teach boys and girls how to stay healthy. Today, we're going to talk about drinking water. Do you know why water is good for you? Here are some of the reasons. It helps to break your food down, making it easier to go to the toilet. It keeps your body cool so you can regulate your temperature. It really helps your body to function better. Children who are between five and eight years of age should drink at least five cups of water each day. If you're between nine and 12 years old, you should drink seven cups. And if you're over 13, you should be drinking eight to 10 cups of water each day. Always drink more water when exercising or on a hot day, as your body loses water quicker in those conditions through your sweat. It is important to always keep a water bottle with you even if you don't feel thirsty, you still need to drink water. Dehydration is what happens if your body does not have enough fluid in it. Dehydration can cause headaches, make you tired and cranky, and also affect your concentration. Remember, water is what your body needs, not sugary juices or soft drinks. How many cups of water have you drunk today, boys and girls? might be time for you to go right now and have a drink of water. Boys and girls, remember that Jesus loves you. Take care of your body and take care of each other. Stephen here again. How are you all going today? Are you ready for another story from the Bible? It's a pretty interesting one today about this guy called Balaam and his donkey. Anyway, the Israelites were getting close to the promised land. The countries around, though, were worried. They saw how the Israelites were blessed by God. When they went into battle, they would win the victory. King Balak, who was the king of Moab, could see that he had no chance of defeating them. So he thought up another plan. He heard about a guy called Balaam. It was said whatever Balaam blessed, stayed blessed. And whatever Balaam cursed, stayed cursed. So King Balak got the idea that if he could get Balaam to curse the Israelites, then King Balak's army would be able to defeat them. So King Balak sent some messages with a lot of gold and money to bring Balaam to him. 
Balaam believed in God and he had once been a prophet. But Balaam had become greedy and no longer served God. When the messages came to Balaam though, Balaam asked God for instructions. God's answer came back very clearly. Don't go with these people. Don't curse the Israelites because I have blessed them. So Balaam said no and sent the messengers home. King Balak sent back more messengers and even more gold. Balaam knew that God did not want him to go. So he said, sorry, you could give me a whole palace full of silver and gold, but I cannot disobey God. God knew that Balaam really wanted to go. So that night God said to Balaam, these men have come to ask you to go with them. Go, but only do what I tell you. So the next morning, Balaam settled his donkey and went with the messengers. As they were going along the road, an angel with a sword stood in the way to stop him. Balaam could not see the angel, but his donkey did. So the donkey turned off into a field. Balaam was not very happy with the donkey and beat it to get it back on the road. A bit further along, the angel appeared again. This time, the donkey moved against a wall, crushing Balaam's foot. Balaam was even more cranky and again beat the donkey. A third time the angel appeared and this time there was no place for the donkey to go. So the donkey lay down on the road. Balaam was really angry by now and beat the donkey. At this time, God made the donkey speak and it asked, What have I done to make you beat me these three times? Balaam was so angry that he answered without thinking. You have made a fool of me, he said. But you have ridden me for years, replied the donkey. Have I ever done this to you before? At that point, Balaam saw the angel. The angel said to Balaam, If your donkey hadn't turned away from me, I would have killed you by now. Balaam had been saved by his donkey. I have sinned, responded Balaam to the angel. If I am wrong, I will go back. The angel told him, Keep going but only say the words that God puts in your mouth. When Balaam finally met King Balak, he warned Balak, I can only say what the Lord wants me to say. That day, King Balak took him to three different places and asked Balaam to curse the Israelites. Every time Balaam opened his mouth, blessings for the Israelites came out instead. Balak was angry. Go home, he ordered. I called you here to curse my enemies but you have blessed them three times. Balaam answered, didn't I tell you I couldn't do anything against the command of the Lord? We also need to make sure that we follow what God has asked us to do. It is not about making money or getting rich. It is about following God's instructions for our lives, listening to God's voice and following his commands, trusting God and using our words and actions to honor him. Hope you've enjoyed our Bible story today. Go and look it up for yourself in Numbers chapters 22 to 24. Take care, stay safe, and God bless. Hey, Grandpa, have you ever thought about selling up your farm and moving to the city? Uh, you could sit at home and do nothing or do whatever you want. Uh, this farm has been in the family for generations. Uh, it's not about money. Uh, it's about being content with what you have. Uh, but haven't you been tempted just a little bit? Uh, no, never. Uh, Shane, you see that big old oak tree over there? Uh, the one I climb and I get to see for kilometres and kilometres? Uh, well, your great-grandmother planted that and watered it by hand during the Great Depression. And the shearing shed over there uh, was built by your great-great-grandfather after the First World War. Wow, there is so much treasure on this farm, Grandpa. Ah, uh, there sure is. Uh, this farm tells a story, and you and I are part of it. So we are living treasures. Uh, that's right, Shane, especially in God's eyes. Uh, it says in Exodus 19.5, Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. I am a treasured possession of royalty? Wow, that makes me feel awesome. Yeah, spot on, Shane. And speaking of treasure, I'm on it. Here's your wallet. Let's go do some e-giving. I love giving your money to God. Let's give heaps. 
Uh, steady on, Shane. Uh, but remember, you can never outgive God. Now, Grandpa, tell me the story about when this old shack was built. Oh, yeah. Uh, this old shack was built during the Great Gold Rush. Hi, my name is Kyra and today we're making nature animals. I've chosen to make nature birds and to do this I need to use some glue, a log, a little stick for the glue, some gum mats for the birds, some wings which can be leaves or petals and a bit of bark for their tails and even like the couple beaks out of stones and the stones can also be eyes. Next I'm going to use some glue to put the wings on. Now I'm going to use some stones for beaks and eyes. Now I think I'm going to put some wings on for the other birds. Now for beaks and eyes. Next, we're going to put our birds on our lock. I've already put some glue on it. And there we have it, three nature birds. Why don't you go and try some? Well Andy, that was a long story about Balaam, but very interesting. It was from the book of Numbers, chapters 22, 23 and 24. How about we pray before we um, put it in our own words? Dear God, please guide us. Thank you. Hey, Andy, do you want to start the summary? Yeah, sure, Shane. Well, the Israelites moved to Moab and all the surrounding countries were worried because Israel seemed to be a blessed nation. So King Balak got all the nations together to see if they could get rid of the Israelites. They decided to get this guy called Balaam to curse the Israelites. Ha! Huh. So they called Balaam and told him that they would give him lots of money if he cursed the Israelites. Uh, but Balaam said, hang on, I need to ask God first. Uh, so he did, but God said, no, no, you can't do that because I've blessed the Israelites. And so he said, no, nah, you better go home. Yeah, so King Balak was still worried. So he sent more money to Balaam so that he would curse the Israelites. But Balaam said, Stay here. I will have to check with God. And in verse 20, um, it says, That night God came to Balaam and said, Since these men have come to summon you, go with them, but do only what I will tell you. So Balaam got up in the morning and started riding with them on his donkey. God was very angry and sent an angel with a sword in his hand to stop him. 
Uh, the donkey saw the angel, but Balaam didn't. So the donkey ran into the field to stay safe. Balaam beat the donkey to get it back on the road again. And they kept going, but the angel stood on a narrow path with walls on both sides. And when the donkey saw the angel, he pressed up against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot. So Balaam beat his donkey again. Next, the angel moved to another narrow place. The donkey had nowhere to go, so it lay down. And Balaam again beat the donkey with his stick. Then God made the donkey speak. It said, why have you beaten me these three times? Balaam said, you made a fool of me. And if I had a sword, I would kill you. The donkey said, I've been your donkey for ages. Have I ever done this before? And Balaam replied, no. And then God opened Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel standing there on the road with a sword. So Balaam bowed down to the angel. Uh, the angel asked, why did you hit your donkey three times? Uh, the donkey saved your life by turning away. The angel told Balaam to keep going, but he could only say the words that God put in his mouth. So when Balaam arrived, King Balak took him up to a mountain where he could see the Israelites. Balaam said, I can only say what God tells me. So Balaam spoke and it was a blessing that came out, not a curse. Uh, King Balak took Balaam to another place and asked him to curse them again. But the words that came out just blessed the Israelites again. This happened seven times. And in the end, Balaam was unable to curse the Israelites. So they all went home. Yeah, and that's the end of the story. Yep. So are we ready for the Discovery Bible questions now, Shane? Sure are. Question one, what's new? What's new for me is there was a talking donkey in the story. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Hey Andy, what surprises you? Well, I'm kind of surprised that the donkey saw the angel all along and he was the only one that could see the angel. So Shane, yeah? what don't you understand? Well, what I don't understand is why Balaam was influenced more by money than what God had told him to do. Yeah, well, I guess money is pretty influential stuff. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, Andy, what will you obey and apply this week? When God gives you instructions, it's a good idea to follow them because God's plans are the best ones. Cool, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, okay, so Shane, what will you share with someone this week? Well, Andy, I'm going to share with everybody this week that it's not a good idea to go against what God has told me to do. Yeah, it's always best to do what God says. So shall we pray now, Shane? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Dear God, thank you for your word. Help us to follow you. Amen. Amen. Well, Andy, I've really enjoyed this series of Discovery Bible Studies. Have you? Yeah, it's given me a new way to look at the Bible. We'll have to get together and do this again sometime. Oh, yeah, we will.
great story. Uh, can you just imagine that donkey talking? Uh, I wish I was there to see that. Uh, imagine Balaam's face when he actually realised he had been talking to a donkey. Uh, one of the most important things that we can learn from this story is that it is always best to follow God's instructions. Now that is one of the things that Balaam was struggling to do. I think it is sad that he used to be a prophet of God. Uh, but the money became more important to him, so he just started trying to get more and more money instead of following God's way. Uh, the best treasure we can find is in God's Word, the Bible. Uh, it is a treasure map which will lead us to the best way to live, uh, the best choices to make, and of course, teach us more about Jesus. Uh, put Jesus first in everything you do, boys and girls. Ah, uh, by the way, if you haven't yet invited Jesus into your heart and asked him to be your best friend, ah, uh, this is a really great time to do that. Ah, uh, all you need to do is say, Jesus, I believe in you. Ah, uh, I would like you to come into my heart and I want to follow you. Uh, I can still remember when I chose to follow Jesus, ah, uh, the best decision I've ever made. Uh, anyway, boys and girls, it's been great to spend time with you, King's Kids. Uh, never forget that Jesus loves you. Uh, stay safe and God bless.